Who is it? It's your mom. Enter. Hey, Orin. Can I turn on the light? It's it's a little dark in here and I can't we see. Dark in here. Huh? We prefer dark in here. My son Orin thinks he's a cyborg from the year 2050. Yeah, so it's trending now that this random nerd here actually think that he comes from the future. Not the first time we hear this kind of bullshit, but let's see how weird this shit goes. You are just come down. Our operations. Listen, listen, we listen. are receiving just come programming. Down. We are watching video. We are learning. Learning what? Learning About what? the future. Wait. So this guy is saying that he comes from the future says that he's trying to learn about the future it is what it is right if that makes sense to you it doesn't make any sense to me at this point we all already know that this guy needs some serious help like just look at him it's like he's been in his dark room all his life without actually leaving it another fact is what he's actually watching on his computer He's clearly watching one of those TEDx presentation videos, which is often all theories and stuff. Corin has robotic movements and robotic speech. It's a glitch, like he's a computer. Your intensity will be matched as we try to save you and everyone that we know. Look at her face, she's not impressed at all. She's just trying hard not to tell him Shut to- Shut the fuck up! He talks in a collective, everything is we. He hasn't said I in over a year. We are alone in this. No one else was chosen to do what we are doing. We need to, you know, save the planet from sudden doom. Cyborgs are part machine, part man. But I gave birth to Orin and he is flesh and blood. Flesh and blood? Does anybody have anything to add to what she just said? No? Perfect. Astro traveling is where he travels to another dimension where he gets uh, instructions from the higher beings. To me, it looks like he's sleeping. Oh my god, her mom just roasted him. Of course the guy was sleeping, pretending to have visions or I don't know, some kind of shit like he thinks he are. There is an apocalypse in the future. We have seen it in our dreams and in our visions. That he would get a job. From that point on, it just spiraled. We are still in that process of gaining full employment. That was a year ago, honey. That was a year ago. Things do not happen overnight. He was not looking for work. Orin is on his computer all day, and he very rarely comes down from his room. Welcome to our headquarters. Imagine this guy working at McDonald's. I'll be honest with you guys, he will do the job pretty well working with the customers as a cashier by the way he speaks. But between you and me, no need to be a boss at McDonald's to understand that receiving a CV reading that he lives in his headquarters at his mom's house looks pity as fuck. He believes he is here to save the planet. Welcome to our headquarters. Hello, we are Orin. A digital and collective conscious and cyborg from the year 2050, sent by a higher civilization to save mankind from the Matrix. Huh? We refer to ourselves as we because individuality has created rifts between people. <laughs> it's actually scary how bad he really believes himself on all the bullshit that comes from his damn mouth. Either something made him believe he's a cyborg, or he's just an epic insane wannabe because he's kind of stupid. We usually only have water. At times we have smoothies. We try not to eat for most of the food that we eat is poison. This is an acai bowl, which has antioxidants and comes from Brazil, the rainforest. We're not a fan of bananas, so we remove those. Okay, 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 okay. Just, just let me write that down, taking notes. So, cyborgs are not fan of bananas. <laughs> what? There is tension between our mother and us. The issue is our lack of matriculation into the real world, into the corporate world, into becoming a productive member of society. So after that, this fag ass went at Dr. Phil's show with his mother, and Dr. Phil asked him if he had actual metal parts in his body. There is a brain implant, which is how we speak to you right now. Or in his butt a shell. Or okay. you don't have a brain implant. 
His mother keeps roasting him constantly. <laughs> she just want him to fucking wake up, you know? Okay, will you be mechanized by then? We are already mechanized. But you're not mechanized now. We are. But not fully. No. Okay, just partially mechanized. Correct. Dude, what the fuck? What part of you is mechanized? Our brain, our legs. Okay, your legs are mechanized? Inside, yes. We've okay. had operations. Okay, so if we x-ray your legs, we would see mechanized legs, not bone and muscle. Correct. Can somebody please come on the stage and cut off one of his legs to prove him that he's not a damn robot? Please? I swear, this shit is getting serious right now. Do you miss your sister? Do you miss spending time with her? We live in the same house. What? What the fuck? Really? Is this guy's sociability really came at this point? The thing he just said is a way to say that he doesn't care about her. Completely. There's nothing novel about artificial intelligence. You know about artificial intelligence because of what you've seen, read, and heard. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time. It's happening. Dr. Phil is ready to kill his ass and break him. You know, here are your cyborg predictions and beliefs. An artificial intelligence takes over the planet. Well, according to James Lovelock, a famed environmentalist, artificial intelligence will soon overwhelm us and remake the world. That, that is that, that didn't come from 2050. That's a that's a very well publicized position today by Dr. But that Lovelock. Is if our goals and artificial intelligence goals are aligned. Fuck you, bitch! You shut the fuck up, bitch! Back the fuck up! I knock the fuck up you. Uh, that's nothing new. Tell me something I don't know that comes from 2050. You are making the assumption that everybody has these same principles and values, that everybody has read these articles. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> no, what I'm about making the, the assumption that- SHUT THE FUCK UP, YOU CUNT! You said something that I found really interesting when we were interviewing you. Learning. Learning what? Learning about what? the future. You said you're learning about the future. I thought you were from the future. <laughs> That's exactly what I said at the beginning. Can we just do a little moment of silence for this guy? And he's probably not feeling really well in his pants right now. Thinking about the shit he's doing while slowly waking up. At least, I hope he is. I was looking at, she says you're in your room all the time. So I was looking at this picture of your room and I see one, two, three, four, five plastic water bottles in your room. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. His time has finally come. And you're a role model. Do you know how long it takes for a plastic water bottle to biodegrade? Educate us. <laughs> About a thousand years. So you have a collective 5,000 years of plastic there that has to biodegrade. But yet you want me to believe that you're here as a role model sent to save our environment. We are not perfect. Bullshit! Yep, Mr. Cyborg. You can make a cross because oh you, my man, just got destroyed. We also own a swell bottle. <laughs> Look at his face. This is, this is a new step in his career. He reached out the highest point of stupidity that he can hear. You also what? Own a swell bottle. What's that? <laughs> it is a reusable and recyclable bottle that we can fill up that keeps the temperature cold or hot depending on what the temperature of the liquid is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We call that a thermos. <laughs> uh.